Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It's been 2.5 months since my last video. That was published in June 30, and now it's almost September 30th, so that's pretty crazy. And in my last video, I went over how to use the FS API in Tower. Today I'll be going over how to dynamically resize a window. And uh, here's my app. I've been working on it, or sorry, grinding on it for the last two weeks, and that is the demo of how to uh, of it resizing. And uh, I'm making this video because it's very easy to mess this up. And if you look at the, I have two, I'm connected, I'm on my laptop. I got a new laptop and I connected it to my monitor. So just to show you, this also works on my laptop. So the issue is that if you do it naively, you can do, you can get, if you're only using one monitor, sorry, you can really mess up and you, this is why, so actually having two monitors was helpful for me, but I'm making this video so that you don't mess up or anything. So before I get into my uh, tutorial on how to do that, I just want to go over the the template that I updated in the last two months, be, or <laughs> this month itself, because the last update video was in June 30th, and I just want to say I updated the template so a lot of things I did was I updated the readmes so that uh, you can get into it, get coding quicker from, uh, you know, from scratch. So if you got a new laptop like I did, that's kind of why I updated the instructions and I added some other stuff like modal providers. So that's not important. I added a trains example for translations. So this is how you do better interpolation. So suppose you wanted to have a link inside a translated text. You can use this trans thing and uh, I'll update it after this video. But anyways, I also updated all the packages to their latest versions. That is done four days ago or something. I'm not sure. I kind of forget. Yeah, somewhere there, you know, over here, September 9th, eight days ago. Okay, so a week ago I did that. And anyways, let's just get started into my tutorial. So I'm gonna skip over that documentation for now because it's really confusing. But anyways, this is where you cut you start off at. And you can see you go to the window because you know intuitively it has to do with the window. I gotta I gotta update it 1.1 later, but anyways. You end up going through here and you wonder well, how do I do it? And you find logical size, physical size, and you think those are relevant, but how do I use that? And it says somewhere, nope, that's not it either, right? So to do that, you need to get the current monitor and uh, let's just go back into it. We can see my imports here, which is to get current, which means to get the current window. So I don't agree with why it's just get current if it's usually going to be imported like this it should be get current window but that's fine by me it's not really a, i'm just nitpicking sorry so we import these two i'll get to i'll get to it in a minute why we import current monitor and uh, logical size and physical size those are just i just imported them for reference to talk about them and i'm going to remove them after this video so because i'm using react and I'm debugging on the web, or if you plan on publishing not just a desktop app, but also on the web, you need to have a check here so that you don't do any of these calls inside a, what's that called, on the web and crash your users' browser. So I have this check over here because underscore, underscore, towery, underscore, underscore is only going to be defined on desktop apps. Even if you have the, what I've done is I changed build oh, with global towery. I put that to false. So even with that false, this is still a thing. Or sorry, this is still defined. So you can use that as a check. And since we're in React, we will, and I want to only dynamically resize the window once, which is when that component gets loaded up, you can use the use effect hook if you're using functional components like I am. And you can just say, oh, I don't want to actually have any dependencies. So I don't want to actually end up, I only want to end up calling it once. If you don't have a list here, it'll always run. So you don't, you always want an empty list. 
And since the functions that we're working with in Towery are usually asynchronous, I said it's better to just have an asynchronous function inside the use effect instead of just calling dot dens and everything that's annoying. So you create an asynchronous function called resize window, and then I just catch everything over here when I call it. And let's get into the nitty gritties. So as you can see, I, call, I got the monitor first, but uh, that's obviously kind of uh, unintuitive for you. You don't understand why we're doing that. Well, when, when we get the size of the window, we call get current dot inner size. And inner size returns a physical size. And a physical size is basically the pixels reported by a monitor, so hardware, okay? It, that's the explanation given in the Tauri docs. So this is hardware, that means it can't be trusted across monitors or across displays. So for example, I have, when I'm setting the size to supposedly a physical size, it'll, uh, the, you know, the effects will be different on one monitor compared to another, because the monitor I'm on right now is 4K, but my laptop is only quad HD. So obviously it's gonna react differently. And if you only rely on logical size, you have to, con or because you're, so then the best way is to rely on logical size. But to rely on logical size, you have to take that physical size that's returned by the window and uh, by inner size, and you have to convert that to a logical size, which is why we need a scale factor now because two logical takes in a scale factor and that scale factor can be get in, you can get that scale factor from the monitor that uh, the window is currently residing in. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to get that scale factor using that current monitor, which is why now you understand why that's there. So let me actually do it like this then. So there you go. That's a more intuitive way to go about it. Uh, of course, I didn't comment my code because it's intuitive after you understand it, but when you don't understand it, yeah, okay, whatever. And uh, basically you get the scale factor, logical size. So you get the logical size currently, and then you just want to do your check. So to do the check, our, you might be wondering how I got this number of 1750 from, and it's not arbitrary. You have to experiment with it. So of course, you can either console.log the current logical size of a window that is, is what's it called, desirable. So you can resize the window, then print out the current size and see, oh, that logical size is desirable. And then you can do your check. Or you can just you know, keep on uh, changing the number and uh, saving the code and then hot reloading will resize the window and you can do it like that. It's not really important. And now there's two ways to do this. You can either... Uh, do it my way, which is I just changed, I uh, swapped out the logical size width with the current width, and then just uh, set the size to that logical size again. Or you could just call new logical size inside this parentheses itself and uh, keep the height the same as this logical size. I decided to go this way so it doesn't, you don't call an extra, you don't create an extra object. Okay. So now I'll just. What's that called? I will just comment the code for the template. So I guess you could say call this a commenting tutorial as well now. And we'll see. Uh, uh, we want to run only in desktop slash Tari environment. OK. Uh, call only first time. Uh, call only when component is loaded. For the first time, uh, note empty list. Okay, and this is pretty easy to understand why it's asynchronous. So now we just got to explain this code, which is to set a size consistently across devices. One must use logical size. Physical cannot be, rel be relied upon, okay? And uh, to get logical size currently to come since, <laughs> since get physical size, 
we need to get the current monitor scale factor to convert the physical size into a logical size. Okay, so of course, I'm also good at commenting and this is not for me, this is for other people. Or <laughs> I could argue it's for me as well because in the future, who knows if I'll use this, it's really informative as well. So now I will show you how to create a template and it's very simple. You do control C over here and you open up this thing. Okay. And oh yeah, look at this. Uh, you can, okay, that's not going to work. And uh, yeah, there you go, guys. I have done some uh, commenting of the code so that you guys can get a good feel for it. And anyways, thank you as well always for watching this video and I hope that these videos are still helpful. I got some comments on my C++ video that I posted a year ago and that guy found it helpful. So I hope these videos like this even are helpful even though it's something small. But anyways, I will see you in the next one, which I don't know when I'll post it, but hopefully not in 2.5 months, maybe even more recent. Uh, it all depends on how fast I can complete my app, which I hope it's incredibly fast because if I can public, if I can finish the app, then I can get to how to distribute the binary and all the DevOps stuff, basically. I'm not sure if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, but I'm interested in automating that stuff. So yeah. Okay. Again, see you guys in the next one. Bye.